verse 32. We are still on our topic. Will God show up for me? Because I know that so many are still in doubt. If God will show for them. So this is all I can play for me. Let's celebrate the young man on the keyboard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put that scripture on screen. We all are going to stand up as we are going to read together. Let's be on our feet. After the count of three, we are going to do it together. One, two, and three. and three. Let's go. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flatteries. With flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and shall carry out great exploit. You know, the B part of it is what I really want to speak on. He said, but the people who know their God. Now, which means, wait for me. Please don't touch any wire again. Let's allow us to concentrate. It shows us that the strength uh, the source of strength of a Christian is in his or her knowledge of God. Now, what's the source of your strength? Your knowledge of God. Now, if you look at it again, you will see that the source of your exploit is what? Your knowledge of God. So, permit me to say that if you see anyone that is weak, feeble in the presence of challenge, I don't think that his trouble is the size of his problem. What is his trouble? The, 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 his troubles is the size of his knowledge of God. Please sit down, sit down. Let me not keep you standing. Now, it shows us that the reason why he's fretting, feeling feeble in the presence of, his, of the challenge is that his level of the knowledge he has in God is very low. Please pay attention. I will show you four things and we'll close. He says for but they, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploit. So if I am you as a child of God what should you be doing? I think you should be searching more in order to know God how deeper and better. Now, so that the more you know him, the more stronger you become spiritually. The more you know him, the more exploit. And you know what exploit is? Exploit is to do unusual or extraordinary things. Exploit is the doing of unusual or extraordinary thing. That's what exploit is. Whoever is doing exploit is the one doing extraordinary things. It is your knowledge of God that determines that. So this morning, hallelujah, stroke afternoon, the Lord placed this in my heart and I want to share it with you. Four truths you must know. In your waiting season about God, you know, we've been taking this topic from the first Sunday. Will God show up for me? Now, four truths you must know 
in your waiting season about God. Now, if you understand these four truths very, very well, hear me, beloved, it will be easy for you to relate with God. You will stay strong and you will be doing exploit. We have in front of us the year 2024 coming. No matter what God must have done in your life in 2023, you will do more in 2024. But you must, I want you to understand these four truths. Now, the first thing I want you to know, write this down, and I want you to understand this about God, is that before God will do anything for anyone, God will say it. Now, that's the first thing God will give you. It's not manifestation. God does not bring manifestation of promises. The first thing God does for anyone that will enjoy him is that God will give you a promise. God gives you the promise of what he's going to do first. Now, and that is the point that so many children of God get to and they get frustrated because they don't know God. They don't know how God exp uh, 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 how God does his things. God will first pronounce before he produces. He doesn't come out first. He speaks first. You know why he speaks first? He speaks first because he is God. There is no one that can tell him to stop what he has said. No one is big enough to stand on his way to say, you know what, you know what, this thing that you have said, you cannot bring it to pass. No one is big enough to stand on his way. That's why he says what he wants to do before he will do them. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 12. I will show you some scriptures. All the people that has enjoyed him first had him give them a promise. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12. From verse 1. Now, those of you behind the camera, they, they, okay, yes, thank you for behind the machine. Now, the Lord had said, can you see? Now, the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of thy country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. Let's move on. To a land I will show you. Now, you will see that even up till the sixth this, God was still giving Abraham promises. Show me the next verse. God was still giving him promises. I will do this for you. I will do that for you. I will do this for you because this is how God operates. Before he will do anything, he will first give you a promise. Now, and I know this is where so many children of God get to. We begin to doubt. We begin to wonder. We have 14 days to the end of 2023. Has the promise of God come to pass in our lives? Will God be able to bring to manifestation his promises for our lives? Just like I told them at the Level Church last week Sunday. I said it cost God only six days to create the heavens and the earth. How many days? Six. I said, then how many is your life? How many? What is your size? That God will now take that, that 14 days will now be too much for God to meet your need. Uh -uh. What is your size? So, the first thing God does, understand, the moment God gives you a promise, hear me, he has settled you. Now, the other three things are not from God. The other three things I'm going to talk about are the things that God expects from us. And it is the way we respond to these three things that will determine if we are going to enjoy the manifestations of the promises we've had. Because, beloved, I have indeed seen so many children of God that had promises but never saw it happen. Is it that God lied? No, now. God didn't lie. When God gives you his promise, he has given you his own currency. It's just like as we spend Naira in Nigeria. What God spends in the realm of the spirit is his word. Or any. That's why he said in his word, he said, he sent forth his word. And his word did what? It led them. He, he said it in Isaiah 55. He said, so is my word. 
that does what that goes out. I want you to see that one. Isaiah 55, we're going to take verse 10 and verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 10. Please, those of you behind the camera, I want uh, the, the machine. I want you to be very fast. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and verse 11. Look at how, how God himself describes his word. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and verse 11. Leba sataya gadabas. Thank you. Isaiah 55. Thank you. He said, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and boot and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread, which means look up, it is the rain that comes on the earth that determines everything that happens on earth. It is the rain that will soften the ground for your seed to penetrate, for it to be able to produce. He said the same thing that the rain is to the earth, he said that's what the word is to man. Verse 11. He says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Look at this. It shall not return. I want you to understand that the, the, the power of the care of anyone's life, anyone's family is not big enough. He says, so is my word. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Look at it. It says, it shall not return to me empty. The word void means empty. So when God gives you a promise, hear me, he has settled you. Maybe you are praying and God gives you a promise. Maybe there is a prophecy. Maybe he shows you a vision of what he wants to do in your life. God has done his part the moment he has given you his word. Am I communicating? Let's finish this. It says, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which what I sent it. Can you see? That God will not come down to do anything for you. He will send his word. And when his word is sent, it is God that came by himself. But let me now show you where so many children of God miss it. Now, after you have gotten the first one, the word, what is the next thing that will, should come from you? Listen, he, God expects you to be sensitive enough. Take note of this number two. Sensitive enough to receive the spoken word as your own word. God ex expects you to be sensitive enough. You know, for instance now, if I just declare in the name of Jesus, go prosper. Everybody will shout, amen. Do you know that it is not everybody that will be sensitive enough to receive the spoken word as their own. Some people will still leave church and be saying, in fact, this Nigeria self. Some people will still go out there and be saying, ah, in fact, in fact, this is my problem. A lot of children of God are not sensitive enough to receive the spoken word as their personal word. Now, let me show you. Let's see if I can give you two or three examples as time permits. Praise the Lord. Now, the first example I want to show you was that woman that fed Elijah Elisha, sorry we call her the Shunammite woman you remember her case now, Minister Gwinga uh, 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 shared with us in the first service in, her, in his message now, this woman so much lived her life in such a way that her joy was not lost they told us in the first service that if you're expecting God, you must not lose your joy her joy was not lost her joy was so fervent to the point that even the servant of God did not know that she did not have a child. Now, but look at when the man of God now came up and prophesied. The woman did not say, oh, we are old and Now, after that boy died, do you know what church? She still did not agree that God can give me a child and take his life untimely. She was sensitive enough to that point. It means that she didn't live in her time. Now, she lived as if she was in the New Testament. Hello, am I communicating? Now, when the word of God comes forth, if you don't receive it personally as a word from God to you, 
you have thrown it back to God. A lot of children of God are not sensitive. That's why they are still confessing negative even when there's a prophecy of good thing standing in front of them. Are you able to make it some we say, ah, with this economy? Oh, are you able to go for some say, ah, pastor, you don't understand what things are saying. When God gives you his word, he has said to do it. But it is your responsibility as a child of God, as I'm saying number two, to be sensitive enough. Now, the second example I'm showing you is the example of David. When he got to the army of Israel and saw that one, one Goliath was molesting them. Ah, give me one person. Give me one person. For me, let me account, one, person that, one person that knows that he's man enough to face me. But you know what David discovered? He discovered what all of them had that they didn't know. They were not sensitive enough to receive. There was a covenant of Abraham, which is called the covenant of circumcision. None of them saw it as anything. And when God made that covenant with Abraham, God said to Abraham, Abraham, your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. So David was sensitive enough to say, no, a Philistine, a Goliath is an enemy. And we have a covenant. There's this covenant with our father, Abraham. He came up and told them, he said, do you know what? Who is this uncircumcised? Who is this man that does not have a covenant with God? That is now trying to molest us these 40 days. Coming every day, 80 times. There is a word from God from us, for us. What's the word of God? He said, this man is uncircumcised. As he was saying it still, the people didn't see it. Beloved, I want you to be sensitive with God. When God gives you a word, he has said to do. He told, he told you that you won't die. He said, you will, life shall he satisfy you. And as long as you give you that promise, be, be sensitive enough to receive it as your personal word. So David said to everybody, I will go. I will go up against him. Am I worried? I will go up against him. In fact, some came to him. They said, you don't know this guy. He has been a Philistine champion from his youth. He said, I will go up against him. I know my, my covenant backup. My covenant backup is that this man does not have a covenant with God. Let's learn to be sensitive. Every word you read in the scriptures, be sensitive enough to personalize them. I see you doing exploit. I said there shall be a divine visitation for you this end of the year in the name of Jesus. He took up a stone. He went out, slung it against the Philistine. The man fell. When he fell, he picked his sword and cut off his head. Everybody was shocked. How did he do it? He did it because he was sensitive enough to receive a spoken word as his own. If you ask so many Christians, can you prosper? They, they are still not sure. Can you live long? Some Christians are still not sure. When they are faced with any little challenge, their confession begins to change. Be sensitive enough to receive the spoken word as your own. Let's take number three. Number three. He wants you, now we're talking about knowing God. He wants you to take actions that leads to the fulfillment of of what he has promised. God wants you to take action that leads to the fulfillment of what he has promised. Do you know that a lot of children of God, we know how to hear promises. Yes, you can be so sensitive to bring it personally to yourself. But do you know that so many children of God don't have the courage to take steps. What have you done with the prophecies that your ears have heard? Some are still looking. No prophecy can fulfill itself. Now, if God makes his prophecies and promises to fulfill itself, you know what he'll be doing? He'll be making us irresponsible. You said, man of God, you don't understand. I went to that servant of God. I was not supposed to fail that exam. The pastor prayed for me and anointed me to go and pass the exam. 
when he was praying for me, I had that on that feeling, that understanding that yes, he was praying for me to go and pass that exam. Sir, after the praying for me, he anointed me. I went to face that exam and I failed. Pastor, why did I fail? Did God lie to me? I will tell you why you failed. You know why you failed? You failed because you received prophecy. You didn't take steps. If I was you, or if I were you, once you receive a prophecy, that should be the reason why you should read more. Or oh, you are saying, Pastor, and the man of God said, uh, uh, by the end, before the end of the year, God will set to us with the fruit of the womb. And we have been waiting. We have 14 days to the end of the year. Sir, is it that God lied? Now, I will ask you, how many steps have you taken? You had action faith. Have you found out medically to find to know whether you have you need medical assistance? Some are just receiving prophecies and just folding their, their arms. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. They said, they said to me at the beginning of the year that my business will boom, my business will prosper, my business will, will expand. Uh, and sir, I am still in that one shop. I'm still in that uh, two weeks to go. Will, will God still show up? The questions should be: what did you do with the prophecies you received? All you are waiting for God to just come and say, Yes, He'll just call you by name. Daring Sola, that prophecy of the land. I've bought a land for you at Baco. Tomorrow I'll be laying the foundation for you. When you get there in four days, time, you shall get to window level. In one more time, you shall get to. If God should do that, you know what God is doing? God is making you irresponsible. Help me tap your neighbor. Say, neighbor, take steps. So many people are the reason why so many prophecies did not come to pass in their lives. Now, I'm not saying God can still not do what he has said to you this year in two weeks. But I'm telling you that these remaining two weeks, if I were you, what should you do? Go and begin to take radical steps concerning the promises that God gave you for 2023. I remember when we were trusting God for fruit of the womb. Or let me even start from before I got married. You know, I told you, I used to tell God as a young brother, when I, that Lord, when I'm going to get married, I, I want to have a society wedding. That was, my, that was my agreement with God. Every time I'm praying, Lord, I don't want a wedding of where two or three are gathered. I want a society wedding, oh God. I want an, elab uh, an elaborate wedding. I didn't have elaborate finance. Oh. But when it was time that the f my wife's family gave me date for marriage, the first thing I went for is a hall of my choice. Did I have the money to pay for it? No, but I had money to deposit. That time they needed, the hall was 25,000 naira per use. And I had 2,500. So I went to deposit the 2,005 to secure that date. Yes, later God used people for me. Few days to the wedding, I got someone that said, okay, I can lend you the money to pay, to pay up. Beloved, that all would sit about 800. The all was filled to capacity. During our wedding, I look back and I said, Lord, vision accomplished. <laughs> I took steps. I didn't fold my arms. The only reason why we had challenge with accommodation was because somebody promised me and said, Pastor, don't worry. That one settled. And I've told you the story. I rebuked him. And he told us on my wedding day, sorry, it is not going. But listen, we started working hard. So many children of God don't want to hear this aspect. When God gives you a promise, don't fold your arms. If God says he's going to make you in, go international, how should you start? Go and look for how to secure an international passport first. So when God gives you his word, hear me, he has said to you, the other three things, I will tell you the third one very soon. The other three things are your responsibility. I told you that the first one, after he has given you his word, be sensitive enough to receive it to yourself. 
The second thing is take steps towards the fulfillment of what he has promised you. Can you imagine when God said to Israel, I'm taking you to Canaan, the promised land. Come on, you could see Egypt. Come on, God said we are going to Canaan. They are to work. They are to go through several seasons. There is your role to what God will do in your life. I want, I want, I want to be said no. There's your role to play. You do, God will not take 100% role. That's why I'm still praying for you. That God will magnify your steps. Within these two weeks, every step you take, the Lord will amplify it. I said the Lord will amplify your steps. He will bring to manifestation what he has said concerning you in the name of Jesus. Then number four. What's the fourth thing? Now, and that is three on our part. Don't forget. The first one is from God. That's God's responsibility. The remaining three is us. Now, the fourth thing is this. Be courageous enough to quote God before the obstacles of on the way. Ni boyato cannot be quote God in Yoruba. Lati quote your Lord. Eh. Eh. Ni waju idujuko. Yes. Be courageous enough to quote God in front of the obstacles you meet on the way. If I promise you that there are, there are not going to be obstacles, na lie. When God gives a promise, you will meet more than a million obstacles on the way. But a man that is sure that he has asked, had God will keep quoting God. Now look at how Israel got out. Let's look at Israel as an example. They were happy. We are out of Egypt. We are marching towards the promised land. And they were dancing. Ah, promised land we go. Promised land we go. The first thing they encountered was the Red Sea. Eh? God doesn't talk to us about obstacles. You will never see anyone that will tell you that God told me that when I get to this junction, I will experience this joy thing. And I get to this. God doesn't talk about obstacles. Do you know why? He doesn't see them. Obstacles are only known to man, humans. God, what, what can stop him? He said in Isaiah 46, I love that scripture. Show me Isaiah 46. I think verse 10 and verse 11. I, I, that's one of my most favorite scriptures. Isaiah 46. Look at what he said about himself. I'll come back to, to the message. Isaiah 46, 10 and 11. Or let's take it from even nine, eight. Show me from eight. I'm waiting. He said, remember this and show yourself. And show yourself, man. Recall to mind, to, to mind. Oh, you transgress or that. That's not where I'm going. You will move on. Remember, move, remember the former things of old. But look at he now started talking about himself. He said, I am God. And there is none like me. For you to know that there is none like me, look at verse 10. <coughs> he said, declaring the end from that I am the only God that can tell you the end from the beginning, and nothing will change it. He doesn't see obstacles. You know, man can give a prayer. Uh, you see, you see, somebody can and uh, a higher authority can stop him. But God said, I'm the I am God. I will tell you this is how it will end and nothing can change it. He says, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, hear me, my counsel shall stand and I will do all. I don't, use, I don't call it my prayer. I will do all that pleases me. That's why when you are faced with obstacles, show me verse 11, when you are faced with obstacles, you quote what God said to you. Now look at this. He said, calling a bird of prey from the east 
the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. I had a testimony in a, a meeting that my mentor organized for us. A young man was to travel to Ireland. He managed, got his visa. He now discovered that for him to travel to Ireland from Nigeria, it would cost him 2.5 million naira ticket. But he had that if he gets to Kutonu, he will get a cheaper ticket. And the distance difference was very, very long. I think he said about 1.5 or so. So he managed to gather 1.5 million, prayed with his pastor, and his pastor said, you are released. The journey is declared safe. We are waiting for your testimony. And he went with that joy. But he got to Kutono and, and missed his flight. And you know, if you, are, if you miss flight, you will have to pay additional fee. And all he had was 1.5. So where he sat at the airport, and the word of God have declared that I should go, that the journey is declared successful. He was quoting God that the journey is declared successful. That the journey is declared successful. Where he was, they said, one of the officials came and said, well, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. You have to pay an extra fee for us to get your new tickets. He said, but the man just stood up and said, you, 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 please follow me. Out of ten, they called three. He was part of the three. He said, the man said, you see these three of you, you don't need to pay anything extra. But this plane is not going directly to where you are going. When you get to the UK, you have to find yourself your way to the next your, the country of your destination. He agreed. You know why he agreed? He said he agreed because prophecy said the journey shall be successful. So they put them on plane. He got to UK. As they dropped them, he needed money to buy another ticket to fly. He said while he was in the plane, he was just thinking that, oh, yeah, I have some friends in UK. He was gathering their numbers because he had to roam his number. He said when he dropped in UK, he just called them, I'm around, oh, I'm around, oh, I'm around, oh. where are you, where are you, where are you? Not up to 30 minutes, some of them came around. Ah, how are you, where are you? They gave him gifts. He didn't talk about tickets. You won't believe that with the gifts they gave me, I could board a flight to where I was going. Overcoat to my The miracle that shocked everybody was when he landed in Ireland where he was going. As he landed, he said he was just moving around like this. And one young man came and said, Oh, I know you. You can bab. Ah, bab biti bow. He said he didn't say anything. He said, yes. He said, the man brought out a clipper from his bag and gave him. He said, Pastor, he was telling his pastor, he said, I don't know how I was able to bab his hair. He gave me $50. He said, another person too came. Ah, you, you did nice. Brought clipper too. He said, that was how he started babbing in, in the airport. Everybody say, God. He doesn't see obstacles. You know why? Because those are things that look like obstacles don't even exist. They only exist before man. So anytime you are faced with a challenge, what should you do? Quote God. Now how do you quote God? You mention the promise he gave you. Every time the devil hears the voice of God, he does what? He bows. But why? What are the, what, what? What do children of God do instead? You hear, when children of God meet obstacles, what did they do? They do what the Israelites did. So they begin to what? Grumble. They begin to grumble. I'm just tired. I don't know this kind of rubbish that is happening. Is it, I don't know. Serving God. Is, does serving God really pay? You know, if you, I, I, you need to come and hear how children of God grumble. You think I've not faced challenge? I've faced challenges. 
Anytime I'm faced with a challenge, you know the first thing I always think of, Lord? I always ask him, Lord, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? And when I ask, what are you doing now? At times I hear immediately. At times I don't hear. At times I hear, just be calm and follow the process. Some don't even grumble when they are faced with obstacles. Some turn back. As if they didn't hear God at all. Some turned into backsliding. Some turned, they, they stopped doing what the Spirit of God led them to do. Some don't even turn back. Some even curse God. I regret ever serving you. Imagine. Me, I don't regret serving God. I love him till tomorrow. faced with any form of obstacles, please quote God. Quote the promises he gave you. Don't let the obstacles change the, your, your confession. You keep telling yourself I will prosper. No matter what the, the condition of the land is, I will prosper. You keep telling yourself I will excel. No matter what the situation is, I will excel. You keep telling yourself, I will make it. No matter what they say, I will, I will make it. Just like what Minister Gwinga was sharing with us in the morning. That there was a woman that came up online and was telling people that, well, I just want you to join me in my joy. I have six weeks to live. Who told her that she had six weeks? Is it not machine? He said, they said she has cancer and the machine, the test says she has just six weeks to live. Now, and she to accept, she came up and she said, now if machine tells you something and you believe, machine and God, who, is, who should be more superior? God now. If at times, the way people celebrate bad news, they don't celebrate good news like that. When you are faced with obstacles, please don't curse God. When you are faced with obstacles, please don't turn back from serving God. When you are faced with obstacles, please don't grumble. What should you do? Quote God. Do what Job did. That when multitude are saying there's a casting down for them, then shall I arise and say, there's a lifting up for me. Beloved, when you keep quoting God, you will keep seeing God. I summarize with this story. Praise the Lord. I told you briefly, briefly about her story. That's the Shunammite woman. She received that baby boy at old age. She was glad that God gave her a son on the platter of prophecy and her own charity as well. And she was celebrating the boy. Until this particular day, her husband sent one of the servants, take this boy to the mom. The boy died on her laps. But this woman refused to pronounce this boy dead. He sent message to her husband. Honey, send me a child and one of her servants to take me to the man of God. Uh -uh, the man of God. The husband said, it's not yet time for others. This is not time that we see men of God. Why do you want to go and see him? What did the man scream? All is well. She didn't use the obstacle as her own confession. All is well. Can you tell your neighbor? Three people around you say all is well with me. Hello, me to lay prophesy from right. Look at how Sister Faith is saying. Say boldly, all is well with me. You don't know that whenever what you speak, I mean, activates something. Every time you use your mouth, you are opening a door. Then she was going. The husband, well, since the husband, the husband, all this way, the husband didn't bother coming. And she was going. They sighted her from far. The man of God. Ah, that's the Shunomite. Gehazi said she's the one. Run towards her and see what is happening. You know what he said to Gehazi? All is well. She, 
even change her confession. So many of you have, so many of you have changed your confession. And you don't know that your confession opens certain doors. Then she got to the man of God and said, man of God, I didn't ask for a child. But why did you give me a child that will not last? The man of God saw her faith. I said, you know what? I will go with you. You know what made that man of God to go? Her faith. The Bible says he locked himself inside the room and laid down the boy and began to pray. And eventually the boy is missed. That miracle that is coming that looks as if he's dead. That looks as if he's slipping out of your hands. The Lord will bring you back to life today. In the name of Jesus. But when you are faced with obstacles, what do you do? Quote God. Quote God. Because when, when you as an ambassador, you are sent to represent a country, you go somewhere and somebody is trying to challenge you, what do you do? You quote your constitution. Please don't bow before obstacles. They don't exist. Because you know why? That's why some of you cry. You are saying, Ah, Ulua, eh, the bad miss or buy. All on Uri obstacle. In your child, they buy your son, contain your Uri. Coexist. He talks and talks as God. Ah, it has happened to me several times. Let me close this Bible so that I will not continue. It has happened to me several times. You know, my covenant confession, my covenant with God over my calling is Isaiah 41 10 and he told me he said every single time there is a challenge son in ministry go to back to Isaiah 41 10 so every time I see anything that is so that looks so heavy that ah kill a late boy I'll just stand on it now, according to Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 that says fear thou not and thy God do not be dismayed and with thee for I will help you and uphold you with my right hand Lord, I ask for your helping hand according to Isaiah 41 10. I always see God show up. Quote God. Over that health, quote God. Over that business, please quote God. Over your academics, quote God. Over your marriage. Except you didn't enter that marriage with a promise from God. Ah, is there time? You know, when we got married, there was no children in our house. First three years. We went to uh, around, around us here. I don't want to mention their name. The doctor sat down on the three-sister chair and put his two legs on the on the on, on the table, was drinking a bottle of malt and he said, according to the scan results we've shown, your wife cannot have a child. When did you get married? I said, we just got married. It's not up to a year. He said, openly you will be more. I said, we will be more. She said, we will be more. I said, we will be more. Very big stomach, doctor. I, I was just shaking my head. So as I was leaving, I said, Lord, I remember when I was going into this marriage, you told me about children. You even gave me their names. Lord, but look at what this doctor has said. I didn't hear anything. You know why? God didn't see what the doctor said. So he didn't see it as an issue that he needed to talk about. The mistake I made was I didn't take the name of that doctor down. If I had taken his name, by now I would have called him. And my family would have visited him to show him what the Lord has done. So what have I taught you today? When God gives you a promise you have said to do, he has played his own part. It is your duty to what? Number one, be sensitive enough to receive it for yourself. Number two, take steps, actions, yes, towards the fulfillment of those prophecies. And number three, 
when you, are met, when you meet with obstacles on the way, what should you do? You go to God. I'm not saying there's not going to be obstacles. But anytime you meet with anything that's like an obstruction to what God has said, it does not mean you should run back. No, it does not mean you should run back. It, should, it only means quote God. Show if you actually believe in what you have heard. Let's be on our feet. Be on your feet. Have you learned something today? Quote God. We have two weeks more. 2020, 20, 23. I want you to believe God concerning his promises. Tell them to bring the children in. Concerning his promises and the prophecies over your life. Trust God for, for manifestation. Don't allow any kind of obstacle to stop you. While they are bringing in the children. Look at the day they arrested Daniel. It was like it was over now. Abby, they took him to court. Those people came up. We saw him praying in the name of another God. He didn't pray in the name according to the writing of the king. And they place judgment. What's the judgment, sir? Cast him to the lions then. Tell them to bring the children. We don't have all the time. Cast them to the lions then. God did not show up at all those points. You know why? God did not see it as something that can stop his plan. Now, imagine it was the king that was crying as they were taking Daniel to the lions then. Not knowing that God himself had gone ahead. He has talked to the lions. This is not the kind of person you can eat. This one. is not eatable. And the Bible says the second day the king went there to ask. He screamed at the entrance. Daniel. Your God that you continually serve. Has he been able to deliver you out of the lion's den? I know the king was not expecting any answer because no living human being will go to the lion's den and return alive. And Daniel screamed, O oh, king, live forever. The God whom I serve. Please learn to know how to quote God few days ago, I was listening to Bishop Oedipo's message. One message he had preached many years ago. He said they were, they were traveling from a journey and he saw that one of the pilots was, uh, was shivering. He now called him, what happened? He said, sir, we just lost one of our engines. And he said, then what's it? He said, we have another engine that is working right now, but we don't know when it will stop. If it stops, what happened? He said, we are going to crash. <laughs> Bishop Oedipo said, because God guaranteed his journey. He said, please, can you serve us tea? He said, all the people that were drinking tea with him did not know that they were flying with wine. <laughs> you know why? Listen, listen. That's why I always encourage children of God. When you hear prophecies that is from God, write them down. So that when obstacles come, these are the things you will use. But you know, if you have forgotten what God has said, you will even believe every obstacle. Lift up your right hand. Let me pray for you. I decree that in the name of Jesus, the glorious promises of God concerning your life within the remaining two weeks to end this year shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Everything that is standing like an obstacle before you today, I command them to bow before you in the name of Jesus. Like Daniel, begin to enjoy the supernatural intervention of God in the name of Jesus. I declare that your right hand is blessed. Within these two weeks, be receiving good news. I say good news. I say good news. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, if there's anyone marked for death among everyone watching me today, 
or hearing my voice from far or near, I declare that by the blood of Jesus, because it is written in the book of Revelation, that the key of death and life is in your hands. I decree that everyone that has been sanctioned for death today, I command that death be averted in the name of Jesus. You will live and not die. I say you will live and not die. You will fulfill the purpose of God for your life. You are blessed. This week is blessed for you. The Lord will keep you away from evil this week in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I commit them to you. Please guide them and lead them to where good things are waiting for them. Guide them away from where evil things are waiting. 2023 will be ending in two weeks. Every good thing you have planned for us for 2023 will not go with 2023. We shall receive them before the end of this year in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for it is done. Our families are covered with the blood of Jesus. Our property covered with the blood of Jesus. Everything that concerns us is covered with the blood of Jesus. And it is well with us on every side. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Can we share the grace and fellowship? One, two, three, and let's go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely.